Hello and welcome to this week's History of the Jackson. So before we jump into the episode, I just wanted to tell you a couple of things, really exciting things about this new project. We've now got a brand new website for History of Jackson. So if you want to go and check it out, it's www.historyofjackson.co.uk. On there you can find a compilation of videos so you can access all the videos on there in chronological order. You can look at all the books I've recommended, so I'm just keeping a little tab. You can use all those Amazon affiliate links, like I mentioned previously. They all help me out, they help me fund and create better content, they help me uh, with my studies, and they help me fund this book addiction. So really, really appreciate it. if you go and check out that website, see what we're all about. On there is also a collection of my academic work and access to tutoring by me. So I really appreciate it if you can have, have a look at that. Also, really appreciate it, all the views, all the likes, it's absolutely brilliant, I love it, and it's really encouraging me to carry on, so if you want to go and subscribe, please press the button down there below and like the video as well if you enjoy it. Without much further ado, let's jump into the video. This week's video is about Henry VI, he was the first king of England and France, and I've been studying for about four years, so I really wanted to do this video I've been really looking forward to it so let me tell you about Henry VI so let me tell you about Henry VI Henry VI was the son of Henry V who conquered more of France than the French ruled in the Hundred Years War and the grandson of Henry IV who usurped Richard II to establish the Lancastrian dynasty Henry ruled from 1422 to 1461 and again in 1470 to 1471 after his redemption. He had a very long minority government which ruled from 1422 when Henry came to the throne as a very, very young man, old boy, about nine months a year old, to 1437, where he ended his minority and came of age. This minority government was split by political factions and political fighting over whether to have peace or war. With France and this factionalism featured key players such as Duke of Gloucester, Duke of Bedford, Cardinal Beaufort and the Duke of Suffolk. Now throughout this period a study by Bach has hypothesized that Henry VI suffered from schizophrenia and it started developing in the 1440s. Henry suffered from auditory and visual hallucinations, depression, catatonia and mutism. Now much of these symptoms were seen as signs from God, direct communications with God, especially the visual, visual and auditory hallucinations. So was Henry a bad king? Now on one hand, he wasn't. He took the religious duties of his office very seriously. John Blackman, his personal confessor, you know, said he was very deeply pious, deeply devout to his faith. And that's shown from a variety of different religious projects. He also knew the limitations of his own ability and lent on advisors to help him through government, help him rule in areas where he didn't feel like he could ably contribute. He also attempted to heal factions and division with his own government. And this was shown in Love Day in 1458, where he took the two parties and got them to parade through London in a display of peace. On the other hand, Henry was a bad king. He never took to the field in battle. He wore armour in a battle once and he never faced an external foe. He also allowed the advisors that he lent upon to become over mighty to and he promoted them above his above their station. So Duke of Somerset, for example, rose right up to the rank of Duke, which was a title that was supposed to be reserved for people of royal blood. He also lent on the wrong people. He did not lean upon the most senior magnates and the most senior nobles, such as Richard Duke of York, who had a birthright to be on the King's Council. So was Henry responsible for his own downfall, for his own usurpation? On one hand, no, he wasn't. There had been unrealistic expectations set upon Henry by his father. Uh, this damnosa hereditas, as some historians have called it, 
damned inheritance plagued on him you know it played on him where many expected him to be able to con- contribute or even continue what his father had done in France and he just was not able to do that he also you know the mental health issues that we mentioned beforehand they didn't contribute like they did they did contribute to his downfall but it wasn't his fault because he couldn't control it he couldn't control when he was going to go into one of these catatonic states where he was unresponsive he he was unresponsive for a year at one point and that slowed down the mechanism of the government the mystique of the crown had already been eroded by his grandfather you know the the usurpation of richard ii had set it like set about a precedent of what to do with an ineffective or tyrannical king whilst henry VI was in tyrannical he was certainly ineffective and many of these nobles must have been thinking you know there's precedent set by henry the fourth about what to do we should take these actions because it's just not the right way for us henry had a lack of a royal apprenticeship he did not learn how to be a king from his father or grandfather he had to learn on the job from what his tutors said or from from history or from what his uncle said and that didn't give him a very firm foundation of what to do and what to expect he also did not look like a king Henry stood at five foot eight, and his rival, uh, the future king Edward the Fourth, stood at six foot two, six foot three. This disparity really showed Edward to look more like a king than Henry did. And Edward, with his height and his size, conjured up in- imagery of great warrior kings such as Richard, Richard the First, Richard the Lionheart, imagery which Henry himself couldn't really invoke. On the other hand, Henry was responsible for his own downfall. He himself led the policy of marginalisation against Richard, Duke of York, excluding him from the council, which didn't go down very well because Richard felt that he deserved this place in the council. He felt that he deserved the right to advise the king on what to do, as he was the heir right up until the birth of Henry's own son. Henry also allowed his favourites, you know, his... The advisors that he lent upon to dominate government, he allowed them to continue the policy of marginalisation of York. He allowed them to rise up. He allowed them to become marginalised. He, well, not marginalised. He allowed them to become over mighty. So he allowed the policies that put in set or put in place the motions that would lead to his usurpation. He also did not take to the field against an external foe. He was the I think the first English king, correct me if I'm wrong, first English king to take to, uh, to not take to the field against an external foe, especially at the time of war. This was quite significant since his father had gone and conquered the vast majority of France, and to go to, to not go to France, and not fight in France when you're a king of France, and to not fight for your your realm definitely, definitely, was not a favourable action with the nobility. He also did not watch. Margaret of Anjou's actions. He did not stop anything. She further solidified his actions in government, especially with the favourites. And Margaret's action of placing Somerset as the godfather to their son further marginalised Richard of York and solidified who the favourites were. But overall, I think it's, an, it's a collection of everything that actually led to Henry VI's downfall. If one thing hadn't happened, then maybe it wouldn't have happened. Um, most of it, though, comes from Henry leaning on certain advisors, allowing them to become his favourites, uh, allowing them to dominate government and marginalising key political figures of the time. Richard Duke of York was a very, very powerful and rich magnet, very, very powerful and politically influential noble as well. And when you're also excluding a man like that from government, especially when he's your heir, um, they are going to be annoyed. And it wasn't a very wise decision because that ultimately led to the Yorkist party being established um, and being that key figure of opposition within the government. And that pushed Richard, Duke of York, to try and become the lead advisor against Somerset. But after an act of attainer, it also put in set the motion that led to the Yorkist dynasty. Or not the York, well, the Yorkist dynasty. Uh, the Yorkist party taking the throne. So on a whole, like I said, it is it is everything that came together that led to the downfall of 
Henry the Sixth. I'm also just a just a key clarifier in this video. This is mainly down to the period of up to 1460, really, uh, 1461. The period 1470 to 1471, where Henry is on the throne again, is really a dispute between King Edward IV and the Duke of Warwick. And Henry was more of a puppet of the Duke of, uh, Duke, uh, Duke of Warwick at that point. So I want to thank you for watching my video. I uh, really appreciate it. It's really encouraging me, all the likes, all the, uh, all the messages I'm getting, all the views as well. So I'm really enjoying doing this. Uh, this is a video I wanted to do for a long time. I've, I've written several essays about it. Uh, I've been studying it for four years. So it's something that I'm really passionate about. I'd like to think I know about, a lot about. Um, I'm also going to recommend a book. I think this is uh, The Hollow Crown by Dan Jones. Fantastic book. It's very accessible, very easy to read. Um, I've used it extensively over the four years to write essays and just to inform my knowledge. Uh, I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in the in the description for this video. Link will also be up on my website for you guys to have a look, possibly get it yourself. It's very accessible, very easy to read. Uh, I definitely, definitely recommend that book. So yeah, um, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe if you do like the video and do like the channel. This video will also go up on my website and the book will be there as well. Uh, once again, if you want to go and check out the website, it's www.historyofjackson.co.uk. Uh, thank you very much for watching again and I look forward to seeing you guys next week.